Okay, okay. What about Sonic Shuffle? Can't like that game. Okay, what about Sonic Heroes? That game wasn't bad, just kind of mediocre. Shadow the Hedgehog? Can't record that one. Sonic Riders? Can't record that one either. Oh, I know. What about Sonic 06? Nope, I already reviewed it. Oh, come on. You know you're not done with that game. No, nope, I seriously already reviewed that one. Darkness, let's be realistic about this. You want to review Sonic 06 again? We both know it's true. I've already been done, not doing it! But you have to, Darkness. It is your reason for being, isn't it? What the hell are you babbling about? It is the only reason you even review games. It is the only reason you are as you are. Okay, that's that's not true at all, for the record. Well, if you don't want to review it, I mean, I understand. I'll just not mention it again if you want. Give me the game. Uh, no, no, really, I don't... You don't have to review it. I'll, I'll just get rid of it for you. I said, give me the fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> Many of you are probably wondering why we're back to this again. And quite frankly, I wouldn't blame you. You think, you think that three times would be more than enough for me to get this done, but but no, I'm I just haven't been able to to, to feel gratified with anything. You know, I, I never feel like feel like I've said enough. It, it's one of those weird, weird, weird things, you know? And, no joke, and I mean this wholeheartedly, Sonic 06 is probably the worst game I've ever played in my life. And that's not necessarily from a mechanics perspective, because there's a lot of games that I've played in my time as a reviewer on YouTube, like Superman 64, for example. Way freaking worse in almost every regard. But the thing about Sonic 06, especially when it comes to me, it's not so much that the game is bad, I mean it is, it is the stuff of legends, but it's not that, just that, it's, it's that, it's, it's, it's freaking offensive. Like, 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 like anyone, if you've ever, like, been invested in a series over, you know, years and, and just watched it all just come crashing down, I mean it just, it hurts me as a gamer, as a, as a fan of, of Sonic, as someone who's been with the series since I've started gaming. But I'm sure many of you are probably wondering what exactly was wrong with my other reviews of it. Well, the first one just sucked. It just wasn't that good uh, to begin with. It was, um, it was rushed, it wasn't even using my own footage, and it spent way too much time talking about voice acting for some reason. The second review was actually way better, and for a while I, uh, I, I, I liked it a lot, but I just didn't feel like I, I'd gone into enough detail. Uh, there was there was more I wanted to do, and then I did this co-op thing with my friend Nick, and a lot of people say, "Oh, that 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 that, that, that puts the, t the cap on it, right?" Well, no, on the basis that that whole thing was really rushed and kind of half-assed in a way. I I would almost go so far as to say that Nick really wasn't as into it as I was. It was just us talking on a Skype chat, and overall, it just didn't go. It wasn't it wasn't what I wanted it to be. So this time I'm doing it alone again, and this time I'm not gonna screw it up. See, I have a plan of attack here. My plan is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna talk about this, re uh, this review is gonna be four parts, right? One part is going to be the Sonic story, one part is going to be the Shadow story, and one part is going to be the Silver story, and the last part is going to be the final story. It's all going to be broken down into four different parts, all in great detail, so that there's very, very, very small chance that I will miss anything, and hopefully, with any luck, by the time this is over, I will never have to talk about this game ever again. Okay, so let's clear something up. A lot of people don't seem to understand just how hyped up this game was. It, it, it really was amazing at the time. See, this was before I was even on YouTube. This was before I was doing my game reviews. This was back during my old forum days when I was on Sonic message boards all day just talking with people. And 
when this game was announced, believe me, the hype drew through the roof. For the first time in since the Dreamcast era, I would say, people who weren't Sonic fans were excited for a Sonic game. And that shit just didn't happen. Sonic 06, the initial trailers, made the game look so impressive, people were absolutely stoked. And the forums were abuzz with fan theories and conjecture, just discussing what the game was going to be like, the plot, the different characters, and just everything. It, it was phenomenal, really. People were actually getting along and discussing how the game was going to come together. Everyone was excited. And then the game came out. There are many theories as to what the fuck happened, but most of them I find to be utter bullshit. Like, I've heard the theory that um, it was Sony that, that, that pushed Sega to release the game so they'd have it for their holiday launch. And I've also heard that it was Microsoft doing the same thing. And I find both those theories to be absolutely bullshit because neither company has any weight when it comes to telling Sega when to release their games. It's not like they're funding them or anything. That was, this was Sega's call all around. And I've also heard a story that Sega fired all their game testers for telling them the game was bad, which I could actually kind of believe. I See, personally, I think the thing that went wrong is if we look throughout history, Sega hates, and I mean hates, delaying games. They just don't do it. Ever. Ever. And I think this is one of those cases where, even though the game was unfinished, they straight up wouldn't delay it anymore. They would. They, they, this game is going out because this is Sega and that's how we roll. And I think that that's what happened here. I don't think development went bad. I don't think there was any arguments on the team. I don't even think it had anything to do with funding or anything like that. I think it's just Sega wanted it out at a certain point and the game just didn't come together quick enough. And Sega didn't give a fuck. And it's funny actually, after the game was launched, it's like the Sonic community went through this weird denial phase about it. I remember on the forums, people were like, Hey, I just started playing Sonic 06 and it's, uh, it's, it's okay, uh, the, this part was really cool, right? Yeah, that part was great! Sorta. It, it was, it, like, for the first, like, five months, I'd say, people were just so confused and bewildered by what they were playing. Meanwhile, of course, professional game review sites slammed the game, and honestly, I can't say I blame them. Some of them weren't harsh enough! But you don't care about any of this, do you? You want me to talk about the game? Yeah, I kind of figured that. Alright, as I said, we're going into this very detailed. This is going to be four parts long. This is just the first part. And... Let's just jump right into this, shall we? Alright, so once you select the Sonic story, the game opens up in this really impressive cinematic. And I gotta say, some of the cinematics, not all, but some of them, are very nicely detailed, especially for the time. It looks good, but let me ask you this. Does this look like a Sonic game to you right now? I mean, I'm being serious. No, I believe is the answer. It just doesn't look at all like what you'd expect from a Sonic title. It looks like a JRPG, to be perfectly realistic. Like, what was the point of this? Why would you risk alienating fans? I mean, I guess they wanted to do something different and make the series feel fresher, and that's fine. But why would you ever, you know, start up a game, you know, and have nothing at all be familiar? There's some kind of weird sun festival where, where these people are worshipping their god Solaris or something weird. And honestly, the cutscene gets rather dull until finally Eggman shows up and starts blowing shit up with his egg carrier. And by the way, you know, you, you made three of those now. Can you come up with something different, bro? It's the egg carrier again. Motherfucker comes down, his robots don't look anything like robots before, but okay, fine, redesign, whatever. We'll talk more on that later. And he's like, I need the Flames of Disaster from you, and I need the Chaos Emerald. And just so we're clear, I'm well aware of the Chaos Emerald plot hole. Oh, I know. You don't have to remind me. Because we're going to talk about that later. When it really comes into play. And why the very fact that this princess has this emerald is a huge gaping hole on the, in the entire series. We're not going to talk about it now though. Because that would waste time. And we really have to get into this. But I just want you all to know that I know. Alright? Sonic shows up, and he's all like, yeah, and Elise is like, hey, you look like this other guy that I know, 
even though Sonic looks nothing like him. And Sonic saves everybody because he's Sonic, and by everybody I mean he saves the princess, even though Eggman shot a bunch of missiles and probably killed at least a couple hundred people, but that's not important. And I, I like how Eggman wants to take the princess alive with the chaos everyone and all that, yet he's perfectly keen to just straight up shoot missiles at them. You know, really not giving a shit. And as soon as this cutscene ends, we're thrown into the main game engine, and Jesus Christ, what a fucking downgrade. You know, early trailers made the in-game graphics actually look pretty good, but when you actually play the game, you realize that in-game, it just doesn't look that great. It, it, it just doesn't. It looks bland and uh, almost lifeless. Characters don't even move properly. It, physics don't seem to work correctly. Like, there's a lot of basic aspects of 3D animation here that aren't applied, and I, I can't get over that. As someone who went to school for this shit, come on. I don't get it. It's not just a texture issue. It's an animation issue. It doesn't flow well. It looks clunky. Anyway, somehow, Eggman captures the princess again. Yeah, I know. Counting gag. Let it go. Alright, it's important. And, and, and Sonic's like, don't worry, I'll save you. I know. I know. You... know. I know. You have not known this guy. Five minutes. And yet, you know. He'll save you. You know. The writing here only gets worse, people. I know. A anyway, Eggman runs off and Sonic decides to give chase. But no! Let's not give chase immediately. Let's waste my fucking time. This is where I started getting really fucking mad because the game doesn't start out, you know, with some heart pounding action, you know, throwing you right into the best level of the game. No, because that's what the previous Sonic games did. That's what almost every Sonic game prior to this did. Particularly Sonic Adventure and Adventure 2. What did those games do? Let's, let's recap. In Sonic Adventure, you fight, you start out, you see the cutscene, you fight Chaos, then you see another cutscene, then all you have to do is jump across a pool and you're right into the first level. That was easy, right? No problem. Sonic Adventure 2 didn't even have the world map. You just start out the game, Sonic jumps out of the fucking helicopter, and you're right into City Escape, easily one of the most entertaining levels in that entire game. And what does Sonic 06 do? It starts you out in the fucking world map, which would be fine if... You know, it was like Sonic Adventure, and all you had to do was go across a pool to get to the first level, but no! No, instead we gotta bumble around a town for what takes at least, at least, even if you know what to do, 15 fucking minutes. Wasting your time, literally. This padding issue is going to come up a lot during this review, but let's put this in perspective. We have just started the game, and we can't even really play it yet. Instead, you have to bubble around and figure out how to get over the first level. No, literally, that is your first objective. How do you get to the first level? Th this is almost insulting. The worst part is that this whole situation leads to a bunch of different plot holes that, 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 that completely fuck with the game. And we've only just started. Can you, can you believe that? Uh, okay, for one, the very first thing you realize is that you can't get across, you know, this, this body of water because it's too long and Sonic can't swim. First of all, why can't the motherfucker just run in the water? He's perfectly capable of doing that. And yes, there's two counting gimmicks here, I know. Alright, one won't come up enough. And if you're saying, well, doesn't Spoony one do that? Aren't you ripping off Spoony one The answer is yes! Yes, I am, because it illustrates a point, and I need to use it, and it's just a counting gag. Spoony One isn't the first one to do that, and I don't give a fuck. I'm doing it, alright? Going all the way. Fuck it. Whatever. Anyway, so you're not supposed to run on the water like you think Sonic can. Well, what about the fact that you have Tails? How about, how about that? How about the fact that Tails is right there with you? What he's doing here is never explained, although granted what Sonic's doing here is never explained, whatever. It doesn't matter. Anyway, he could fly you across the water. That's easy, right? Tails is more than capable of doing that. Or why don't you go to find the tornado and chase after the egg carrier midair? You've done that before. No, no, we're not going to do that either. Because that, that might actually... 
actually be fun or something crazy like that. Now, instead, you have to go to the store and find a way to get enough rings to buy the light speed dash. I wish I was making that up. You have to find enough rings to purchase your light speed dash. First of all, that's another motherfucking plot hole. Because Sonic has had the Lightspeed Dash standard since Heroes. Why uh, all of a sudden does he have to buy it again? And at least in other games where you had to get it again, like in Adventure 2, it was right on the main path and you didn't, it didn't waste your time by having to get it again. It didn't get in your way. He just grabbed it and went. It wasn't a fucking chore. Here? No. No, but you know what you have to do? You have to go and do a town mission for somebody and then he gives you enough rings to buy the Lightspeed Dash, and these town missions, oh good god, these illustrate another issue that really plagues the game, the fact that literally more time, more of your time is wasted in load screens, and it's n not any more apparent than in these town missions, because let me tell you how this works, alright, to do a town mission you talk to the person and you accept the mission, there's a load screen. Mind you, load screens in Sonic 06 range on average about 15 seconds. Long end is 20 seconds, short end is 10 seconds. So average 15 seconds. I know this because I timed them, and so that's already l really long to wait. But g get this, the load screen ends, and then the guy explains the mission. And then there's another fucking load screen. Again, average of 15 seconds. Then you do the mission, which isn't fun to begin with. There's another load screen. He thanks you for doing a mission. And then there's another fucking load screen. If we're talking about an average of 15 seconds here for per load screen, that means during these town missions, there is exactly one minute of your time that is absolutely wasted. That is retarded. Alright, so you get the fucking rings. He gives you these special shoes, because you needed those or something. And then you go to the store and 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 you buy the light speed dash, and then you could go and save Elise. But really, there's two more plot holes here, you know, that I have to talk about. For one, why does nobody in the town raise a finger to help you? Now you have to do fucking missions for them first, and and then they'll help you save their princess. I'm starting to wonder if anybody in this town really wants the princess saved to begin with, because you have to do their fucking chores in order to get your fucking rings in order to save their fucking princess. Couldn't they just get a boat and ferry you across so you could chase down Eggman? Yeah, that might be nice, but no. Also, I'm mystified by the fact that there is a store in this town that sells Sonic's abilities. How does this place even exist? I am literally lost on this one. How does this store turn a profit when Sonic isn't in town? Are there any other products for sale? Why does Sonic have to buy his abilities, and really, who goes out and makes and constructs abilities for Sonic to purchase? Why does this place exist? Anyway, you go across with your fucking light speed dash, and then you go into the first fucking level. Cause that took about 57,000 years. Thanks for that game. After you wait through a load screen, then you get into wave ocean, and this fucking level... This level was gonna come back to bite me in the ass a lot because, because get this, you play Wave Ocean twice in Sonic Story, alone. Just Sonic Story, you play it twice. You wanna know how many times you played in the other stories? More on that later. Anyway, to talk about the level in itself, well, it illustrates problems with the game engine to begin with. The fact is, the game is poorly programmed, and that's not even saying the half of it. You get stuck on objects, uh, physics don't work properly, walking on walls is actually fairly normal, and there's really no sense of speed. And that's the thing that bothered me the most. It wasn't so much the glitches, although believe me, the glitches in this game are the stuff of legends, we'll get to those in a bit. But, Jesus Christ, there's just no speed here. You feel like you move so slow, aren't you supposed to be Sonic the Hedgehog? Aren't you supposed to be rolling around at the speed of sound or something crazy? I mean, wh where's the speed? Where's the action? Where's the feeling that you're, you know, walking on air? I mean, all that is gone, and it's just this clunky mess of you just 
killing enemies and walking forward and killing enemies and walking forward. Even the fucking platforming isn't challenging to begin with. And you might be saying that Sonic games have never been that hard, which, great, but the game almost feels like it's on autopilot. Wave Ocean also decided to rehash a bunch of things for Sonic Adventure, which you could argue are, you know, supposed to be references, which, great, but why couldn't we come up with something new for the game? You know, something different and interesting? That might be nice. I don't know. Anyway, you, you get to a point where where Sonic is stuck on this frickin' Orca, and and Tails and he and he yells to Tails to, to make sure the Orca doesn't get out. Why Sonic wants to keep this Orca trapped in here, if anyone guess, or why the Orca can't just jump over the gate because it's clearly non-existent. Anyway, then you get to play as Tails, and this is where things really fall apart because you realize that Tails' gameplay fucking sucks. Because not only is he slower than Sonic, which is confusing to begin with, but he's not even half Sonic speed. I mean, he is slow as fucking dirt, and I have no idea why they would ever program it like this. His flight works okay, and he throws dummy ring bombs. Really? What for? Why would he throw dummy ring bombs? He just throw regular bombs. The problem with the dummy ring bombs is that not only do you get the dummy rings confused with the actual rings, but having that many fake rings on the screen tends to cause the game to lag. The lag is something that comes up a lot whenever there's too much going on on the screen. It causes the game to become quite jittery, it'll slow down, and that's even more apparent when you play as Tails and you throw a gajillion dummy ring bombs anywhere. And you might be saying, well, don't throw that many, I say, well, why why is it a problem in the first place? I shouldn't have to restrict how many bombs I fucking throw. How about that? How about that? It's the sign of a poorly programmed game. Deal with it. Anyway, you go push the fucking button. You lock Free Willy inside because you're a fucking asshole. Sonic gets launched over the gate and drowns horribly. Game over. No, that's not what happens. No, that throws you into the mock segment, where Sonic, you know, randomly decides, you know, maybe I should go fast. Yeah, let's do that now. Now that, you know, we've already gone through a boring-ass level, you're gonna throw me into this mock stage, where now you're going fast. And, and you might say, well, now that he's going fast, isn't it better? Uh, no, because control doesn't exist here. Horizontal movement is difficult, and you have absolutely no control whenever you jump. If you jump in the wrong direction, you'll end up going off the screen and into a pit. You can't, you can't do that. You have to time everything perfectly. If you don't, you're absolutely screwed. And of course, if you hit one thing, you lose all your rings. So dying is actually fairly easy here if you don't know what's going on and you don't know what's coming. It's almost trial and error in a way. And it gets cheaper way later in the game when these stages become more difficult. But let me tell you, th this first one is going to put you off to the concept. It's just annoying. No, I didn't make it do that. You can't control yourself on this loop. Get this, if you're too far to the right on this loop, it actually launches Sonic into oblivion and you die immediately. Now, you have to hit the loop at the exact right spot. Not that there's any indication as to which spot is correct. Oh no, that might actually be a little bit fucking convenient. No, instead it's just, you know, oh, if you hit that one spot, pff, you die. Yeah, thanks. That's a glitch, if, I, if there ever there was one. Thanks, game. Love you too. So Sonic and Tails chase the egg carry and then decide, you know, let's stop chasing. Let's go back to town and, you know, find out where Eggman is going. He could be going to the other side of the world and that freaking thing. But no, let's go back to town. The exact opposite direction of where Eggman went. What the, what fucking logic does this make? Who the fuck does this? You literally just wasted my time again. What was the point of going down Wave Ocean? What was the point of any of this? I literally just spent the better part of 15 minutes in this fucking level, because load screens, remember, only to be greeted with, ah, let's go back. Fuck you. So you get back to town, and now there's more busy work, which, uh, great, that's exactly what I fucking wanted. That's exactly what I want to do. Just, you know, run around in town again. Great. Love it. Love it! Anyway, so you gotta save this fucking girl who's stuck on a roof. How she got up there is anyone's guess. And if you do that, then the mayor or whatever, I think he's like a region, I don't remember, it doesn't matter, will let you into the next level. But it's just more padding, it's more busy work. In order to do it, you have to go buy Sonic Slide. 
which is weird as hell because it doesn't make any fucking sense. And, and and then you know you you get to go saber. You know not that Sonic can roll into a ball and go under it himself or anything. You know he's not perfectly capable of doing that. Whatever. You go to the next level and immediately you find Elise. Cause I guess I guess Eggman decided to hide the princess right next to town. Cause that makes sense. And you find her, but then Eggman sees you. Ha ha ha! I'm evil. And then he launches the first boss of the game at you, the Egg Cerberus. And I have a few fucking problems with this boss. For one, that's not a Cerberus! Cerberus, by definition, has three heads! That is one head! Why is it called Egg Cerberus? For two, this boss fight is fucking retarded. Okay? Because, holy crap. Get this. You're supposed to wait until the robot gets tired. You're supposed to wait until the robot gets tired. Ugh. And then you grind up its tail, you grab this horn on its head, and you steer it into the walls. Why this magic horn on its head gives you the ability to do this is never explained. But then once you do that and get it down to half health, then Sonic is like, oh, now I can see your face. And you'd think that would mean that you attack it in a different manner, like hit it in the face or something. But no, you literally do the same thing again. So, um, what was the point of that line? All it does is deceive you into thinking the boss fight has actually changed when it hasn't. So why bother having a line? It's not like it's that hard to remove a vocal line. It's not like you needed it there. Take it out! So you beat the fucking thing up, you rescue Elise, and I, I, I just, I still can't get over how fucking stupid this is. In fact, I count it right now. Thank you. Okay. How long is this gonna Tails, go Tails decides that, you know, let's split up so he can distract the robots and Sonic and Elise can get away. Here's my problem with this. The robots are probably under orders to recapture Elise. Why would they bother chasing Tails? Why would they do that? They can clearly see Elise and Sonic. They would obviously chase down the one with the princess. Why would they be distracted by Tails at all? He doesn't have Elise! And then you're launched into the sand level, where you die immediately because you fell into sand. And I can almost guarantee this happened to almost every single person who ever played this game. Because the tutorial that tells you about the sand is literally two steps before it, and nobody, and I mean nobody on this planet, when they hit a tutorial in a Sonic game, stops moving. That doesn't happen. You walk forward, you thought it was safe because it's just sand, and you fell in as if nothing was there. That's great. You know how you avoid the killer sand? You put up this weird shield that Sonic and Elise can do, which is also never explained, but even if it was, the very fact that I had to do it to walk on top of sand is confusing and it makes no fucking sense. There are certain parts where you can actually step on sand, and there are certain parts where you can't. Not that the sand is at all distinctive in its design. It all looks the same. It's all sand. You know, I've never gone to the beach and immediately sunk into sand randomly. That's never happened to me. I feel like that um, this level makes no sense or something crazy like that. If not for the sand, the level wouldn't be the worst fucking thing in the world, but the sand makes the whole thing straight up stupid. You know, as if the gameplay wasn't bad enough. Now you've added this weird ass sand that we have to do this weird shield over. Yeah, thanks for that. That's good. That's great. The whole point of this entire plan, by the way, is so they have an excuse to do this weird romantic scene between Sonic and Elise. Which, by the way, I'm gonna restrain making the usual bestiality jokes. Because that's not really my problem with this whole romance. Everyone complains about that, but that's not really the issue. The issue with the romance is that it's poorly written to begin with. It is one of the most rushed, ill-conceived, forced character romances I've ever seen in any fiction. A book, a movie, a game, anything. It is some of the worst writing I've ever seen, because all of a sudden these two are magically in love. Like, when the hell did that come up? When did this happen? What, she, he just rescues you? You don't even really know him. And you're in this field, and 
it looks all pretty and shit, although by pretty I mean that this is one of the cinematics that gets a massive downgrade from every other cinematic. I mean, just look at Elise here, and look at her here. Which one is way more detailed? It, probably the one on the right. I don't know what happened. I guess these cinematics were literally unfinished, because they lacked the polish of all the other ones. But, you know, even if the polish was there, uh, how about... Um, the fact that literally the only reason we know these two are in love is that they're in some kind of, you know, nice scene. It looks all pretty and shit. I'm guessing the writers of this game must have taken lessons from George Lucas in terms of writing romance. Because that's all they do. There's no actual, you know, development between the two. They're just in really, really beautiful locations, and that means they're in love. That's just what it means, and you'll deal with it. Let's move on. So they get back to town, and all of a sudden... I've been looking for you. You're the Iblis Trigger. <laughs> That's the sound effect you're going with? <laughs> really, a little spaceship coming down? That's what you're gonna go with? Okay. Alright, that's a little funny. Alright, so anyway, Silver shows up. And and this motherfucker is the most annoying little shit you will ever see. I'll, I'll, I'll bitch more about him when I get to his story arc, but Jesus Christ, this guy. I cannot believe how badly they fucked this character up. For the future of the world, I will destroy you! I am here to save the future! Oh my god, this fucking boss fight is the stuff of legends. Alright. Get this, you can't walk within two feet of silver. If you do, he just immediately cries, it's no use, and throws you. Every. Single. Time! You can't avoid it! There's no way to get close to him unless he's doing an attack. That's the strategy here. Stay far away from him until he uses some other move and then hit him. But even when you do that, Usually you can't get out of range quick enough before he just grabs you again, cries it's no use, and then throws you. And the worst part about this is that because they set up the boss fight like this, why they did it escapes me because it's fucking stupid. But because they did it like this, you can actually get stuck in, 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 in it's no use loop, as I like to call them. If you get too close to a building and he just stands there, you're screwed. Or if he throws you directly up in the air and you fall straight down back on top of him, he'll just do it again. And you can't get out of it. It is one of the most ill-conceived boss fights imaginable. It's not hard once you know what to do, but figuring that out can be a real pain in the ass. And then once you beat him, I love how you don't really beat him anyway. Now, now he just grabs you and throws you into a wall and then tries to kill you. And then Elise gets kidnapped again. Good for that. And Sonic runs off to save her. And then Amy's like, I'll take care of this, even though Silver will probably throw her into a wall more on that later. And then Sonic ends up chasing Eggman. But before the townsfolk let you chase Eggman, they want you to do their bitch work again. See, they won't let you into the other part of the city until you can ask permission from the captain. And in order to do that, you have to do a town mission to figure out who the captain is. Which, the very existence of this mission insults me as a human being. Really, guys? You don't want me to rescue her, obviously. You know, just say so. You're, you're literally wasting my time with this fucking game. Your princess has been kidnapped. I am trying to save her. Let me through the fucking door. You'd think they'd roll out the red carpet or something to let me go rescue this bitch, but no. No, instead I, they gotta waste my fucking time. I am convinced at this point that everyone is literally working for Eggman in this town. Nobody wants me to rescue Elise. Everyone wants him to succeed. Because not only do they waste my time, but nobody else tries to attack Eggman. You'd think the guards here might actually have weapons or something they'd use to fight Eggman, but they never attempt such a feat. They don't have a gun? Nothing? Anything? You can't help me at all? Jesus Christ, and then you waste my time. Yeah, thanks guys. Thanks a fucking lot. And then you get there. By the way, the whole reason you're going there is that you have to meet with Knuckles, which, um... I'm meeting with Knuckles. Really? Don't you have an emerald to be guarding? And the thing I love about this whole thing is that the setup for him being here is that 
He saw Eggman on the outside of town. What Knuckles was doing there is never explained. And Eggman gives him a message to give to Sonic. One, why doesn't Eggman just give Knuckles a bomb if he's that stupid? If he's gonna bring Sonic whatever fucking trinket that Eggman happens to give him, give him a bomb, blow up Sonic, end of the story. Not hard. Alright. The second thing is, Knuckles is here, not guarding the Master Emerald. Why? That's your charter, dude. That's what... You're supposed to do. That is your meaning. That is literally the meaning behind your existence. And you're not guarding it. No, you're you're just here for no reason. And it's not like he contributes anything to the plot. Beyond this point, literally, Knuckles does nothing. And I mean does nothing. He contributes nothing to the story. If you took him out of the story, it would change absolutely nothing about this. Really. And then, and then we have to talk about Eggman's rationale here. Knuckles is supposed to be guarding what is, by definition, the most powerful energy source in the world. Debatably in the, in the known universe. It is the Master Emerald. He stole it before to power the Death Egg. As soon as Eggman saw Knuckles not guarding it, you'd think that... His first thought was, you know, um, I got a little time here. Maybe I should run over to Angel Island and steal that shit. Nobody's watching it. Why wouldn't he? It would be really easy and he'd have a massive energy source. Hello? So anyway, Eggman tells Sonic to bring the Chaos Emerald to save Elise. And Sonic, like a dumbass, even though Tails points out that it's obviously a trap because Tails isn't a complete fucking moron, he decides to go there anyway to white Acropolis. The snowboarding segment, by the way, sucks. The controls are awful, and it's boring and dull. Remember the awesome snowboarding segment for Sonic Adventure? Yeah, not even close. And then you get to another level, and it's just as mind-numbingly dull as you'd expect it to be. It's just the same shit over and over again. They occasionally get to play as Tails. That's always nice, and by nice, I mean it sucks! Really, all it does is waste your time, but I really want to go back to the snowboarding segment, because that's the part of the level that's really, truly awful. See, they did this thing where you get, where if you jump at the end of, a, you know, a ramp, you go further, which, fine, if it functioned properly, but you have to get it so exact that it barely works at all. I, I just don't get it. I can barely do it even today, and there are times where you have to do it in order to proceed, like the last big jump. And if you fuck that up, well, you die. And that's always nice. Thanks, game. I'm glad your controls are great. They're not. At all. Right, so... Sonic gets there and it's a trap. I know, right? Well, we have I don't know. I don't know what I expected. Where's Elise? Then Eggman's like, "Aha! I'm going to use this machine and teleport you across time." And and he explains to Elise that, for one, they're not dead yet. They could have been teleported in this past or far future. Although I would argue that that would almost guarantee their death because what if you set them far enough into the past or future that the Earth no longer exists or something? You ever consider that? They're definitely dead then. Anyway, he also explains his machine needs some fine tuning, and in order for it to be complete, he needs the flames of disaster from her. My big issue with this is that your machine obviously works, so what are you exactly are you trying to do? He explains his plan later on, and he's actually trying to control time or whatnot, but really, I don't understand why he needs the flames specifically. So, Sonic and his friends get teleported into the far post-apocalyptic future where Silver is from, which is oddly convenient. But what's even more convenient? Get this. They're teleported to the exact same time, in the exact same location that both Shadow and Rouge just happened to be at when they were randomly teleported into the future. I cannot even begin to explain what a massive gaping plot hole that is. Of all the chances, of all the times that Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles could possibly have been teleported, they get the one. The one instance where Shadow and Rouge just happen to be. No! I'm not suspending my disbelief for this. This is near impossible. Oh yeah, 
I guess it could happen, but it's so ridiculously convenient and retarded that I cannot accept it. Anyway, they realize that the future is destroyed, and they have to get back to the past. Cause, yeah. Okay, to stop Eggman or whatnot. But for one, where the fuck are they? No, seriously, this looks nothing like Soliana, but they were obviously just in Dr. Eggman's lab, and they clearly teleported to the location. But where is this city then? Where are they? This is clearly not the same town as before. And my shadow goes off on this tangent about chaos control and explains stuff. You mean using your chaos control will? Yes, but that alone is insufficient. Oh, dude, just back it up, all right? Why does he get all dramatic all of a sudden? Like, ooh, yes, this, yeah, that, alone that alone is insufficient. No, it makes me wonder how shadow behaves in other situations. Like all right, so the recipe calls for. One egg, right, Shadow? Yes, but that alone is insufficient! You will require two eggs. I don't know why I asked you for help. I am the ultimate life form, Maria! So, Anyway, they decide to work together on it, and they go through Crisis City, which people argue with me that it's actually the best level, but I argue that all the levels suck, so why are we arguing about this? There's a lot of rails, which makes the level suck, because rail control is fucking impossible in this game. Remember before when you switched rails, you hit a direction, you jumped, and you went to the other rail? That was easy, right? Here, that doesn't happen. You jump off a rail, and you have to realign with the other rail you want, which could be an absolute bitch to do. If you don't have any practice with this, you're not going to be able to pull it off, and you'll just die. So that's always fun. There's also another mock stage, which, <laughs> yes, that's what I wanted, but this one's a pain in the butt, because not only do you really have to align your jumps properly, because if you don't go completely straight, you're, you're rocketing off the edge of the road and you're fucking dying. But on top of that, there's cars flying at you from behind where you can't see. The camera changes randomly, which can be very disorienting. And overall, it's a pretty miserable experience, let me tell you something. So after Crisis City, you know, they, 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 they stumble on Silver and Blaze as they're talking to Mephilus. You know, more on that again in the next parts. Don't want to get too detailed here. And they disappear, and they fuck off, and then they... And in the data, and they realize that Elise dies when Eggman's egg carrier crashes because that happens somehow. And Sonic. If we don't return in time, Elise will die on board Eggman's battleship. What? If we don't return in time, Elise will die on board Eggman's battleship. Oh my god. Oh my god, my head hurts. Oh my god, I, I think I literally lost lost brain cells listening to that. Oh my god. Oh my god! This is a fucking time travel plot! If we don't return in time, Elise will die on board Eggman's battleship. You have infinite chances if you're going through time. You could go back to before Eggman even attacked in the first place and stop him. What do you have to hurry for? The only limit you have is your own lifespan. Anyway, so they realize that they have to go into a volcano to get an emerald or something and whatever. And so they do that and then I got mad. No, I seriously just got mad like immediately. The level music in this one stage is fucking awesome. And that's the case with a few stages in this game. And some of the character music actually. The music in the game is actually not bad. Uh, there's a lot of mu musical tracks that are actually really good, and it infuriates me. You have this awesome metal riff going. It is stuff legends are made of. It's one of the best video game soundtracks you could possibly hope for. And it's in this game? It's in this piece of crap? You're joking! Why would... Such wasted potential! Come on! Anyway, the level sucks, uh, by the way. Because, for one, um, I should mention it this time, because now is as good a time as any, to throw out that you can walk on loops, because um, instead of programming the physics to work with, you know, loops, they actually made you get locked on a track whenever you go around a loop. So, 
you can walk on the ceiling as if you were, you know, walking normally. It's ludicrous, uh, to say the least. On top of that, um, lava pits make this level kind of miserable, especially if you walk into invisible walls, which do exist in this game and in this level, for the record. On top of that, you get to play as Knuckles for the first time, and that's not good because Knuckles gets stuck to walls. Anyway, you get to the end of the level, and all of a sudden, a bliss shows up, who's like this larva thing, randomly, for no reason. And then you gotta fight him, and this boss fight is nothing but a waiting game. Uh, literally, nothing but that. All you do is you, you jump around and you wait for a bliss to do his happy dance to drop some stalactites. So you can run up, turn a light on, and then he just comes to the light and you hit him in the face. Rinse and repeat. You do this over and over and over again, and it is one of the most boring fights I've ever seen in the game. This is not how you design a fun game, people. This is not what you do. This is the exact opposite of fun right now. What is wrong with you people? Good fucking god! You beat him, you open the portal. By the way, the function of this Chaos Control time travel thing is confusing to me. This is something Chaos Control has never been able to do. Ever. It, 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 it can warp things, yes, but since when can it rip open a portal through time? On top of that, my big concern here is how do they know this portal is going to the right time period? How do they dictate to it where they want to go in time? I mean, it can be going anywhere. Right, so after they get back in time... What the fuck is that? Soriana? Soriana. That is what that says. You misspelled the main town? The main state of your fucking plot? You misspelled it. Soriana. How do you do that? I, 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 I'm sorry, I can't get over that. You may think I'm, I'm nitpicking. And I am. But what the fuck? How do you misspell that? Soriana. Soriana. Is that your weird way of saying sorry? Soriana, we made this shitty game. So, you do more busy work. Fun. And, and then you go to Radical Train. And, and the whole point of this is that you have to stop these bombs from exploding and destroying the train because that's what Eggman does, I guess. He lays random bombs on a random train track for no fucking reason. It, it, it just makes you have to go through the level faster. And the level has these weird weight systems and these conveyor belts, which you think might make it interesting, but it just makes the level more annoying and more of a waste of time. You begin to realize more that you're just playing a piece of shit, and really what you're playing isn't fun, and having to deal with annoying conveyor belts and weight systems just doesn't make it any better. There's also another mock stage, which, great, because that was so much fun before. And the, the thing that mystifies me about this is that when you catch up to Eggman's train, also, why is Eggman using a train? <laughs> I have no understanding of that at all. Although that's a huge gaping plot hole for later. We're not going to count that yet, though. Because I'll, I'll review in the next part why that's a plot hole. Anyway, so you're chasing Eggman's train, and for no reason, no reason that I'm ever able to ascertain, it just magically starts exploding. And then you catch up and you rescue Elise. Why it explodes is beyond me. It never, it's never explained, it just does. So you rescue Elise again, but Silver shows up and Eggman's allowed to recapture her. Again. I am here to save the future! But it's okay, because Shadow shows up like a boss and decides to fight Silver himself, so Sada can run off and save Elise again. And then Eggman unleashes his Egg Genesis at you! Ooh, scary! And this is a boss is another waiting game. As well designed as I think the boss's model is, basically the idea is that you gotta wait for it to, to lower itself, release its minions, use it to bounce up there, and then jump on its head. Now literally, that's what you do. Over and over and over again. Until it eventually dies. It gets old. Really fast. And then... It, this level, you know, it mystifies me, because you're never going to believe this, and I'll just mention this now. This one segment of this one level, right here, that you're playing right now, 
This is the only level in the entire game that's never rehashed. Ever. There's a part of this level that is used again, but not this one. This, this is the only one that's never used again. It's only used for Sonic and Elise, which, in fairness, level's annoying as hell, because you have these stupid purple buds that if you don't hit the jump button just right, you don't jump high enough and you fall. Although, falling off of these did reveal an amazing glitch. I don't even know how this happened, and I'll probably never be able to repeat it, but somehow I got Sonic stuck in this weird never-ending jump animation. Like, you're supposed to fall in that water and die, right? But instead, he's, like, bouncing up and down, and this goes on, and the only reason I ever got out of it is that I had him do a homing attack, and then it fixed itself, and then he died. But I almost was said to just leave it there and just let it keep going on forever, because I'm pretty sure that's what exactly would have happened. And if this isn't a sign of a broken-as-fuck game, I don't know what is. And then you beat the jungle level, and then you have another fucking romantic scene and a beautiful location because romance, I guess. Uh, also, Elise talks about how she mustn't cry because her father said she shouldn't. The crying thing is going to come up later. A lot of stuff is going to come up later once we piece all these parts together in the following segments of my review. But this entire crying thing really makes no fucking sense to begin with, you know? But besides that, so... You finish that, you go back to town, and then Elise goes back to her palace, but the Eggman says, you know, I'm really just gonna level this entire fucking city if you don't come, you know, you come with me. Elise is captured again, by the way. And really, I can't say I blame Eggman for this. You have a giant battle station at your disposal. Why wouldn't you just level the city? Problem solved! So, Elise goes with Eggman, but then Sonic is nowhere to be found. Where the fuck is he? The one lady asks Tails to help by ask Tails to help. I mean, she sends Tails to Wave Ocean. And then you play Wave Ocean. Again! It is literally the same level! Again! You, you get nothing from playing Wave Ocean again. Nothing happens as a result. Nothing is changed. You could skip this entire segment and nothing would be different. Why the fuck does Tails have to play Wave Ocean again? Why? God. Damn it. Holy sh Why? What? What for? Because you get done with it and then Sonic's there and then you go and then you do the actual level. And by do the actual level, I mean the townsfolk feel like wasting your fucking time again. You have to do these trials, right? And... This was dumb. This was really, really dumb. Because for one, the trials are set up like town missions, meaning they have lengthy load screens, so they take way longer than they should to begin with. But even if that wasn't dumb, the first one is the trial of intelligence. And by intelligence, they mean, let's play a guessing game where you jump into random teleporters and hope you can get to the end just by sheer guesswork. It has nothing to do with intelligence. It has to do with playing a guessing game. That's not intelligence. That's luck. Luck. And then the next one is the trial of courage. And by courage, they mean defeat all the enemies with zero rings, which, by the way, is a pain in the butt. I did it in one try on this playthrough, but I got lucky, to be perfectly realistic, because some of the enemy types in this game have really obnoxious laser attacks that are really hard to dodge. And, god damn it, why do I have to do this? And then the last one is the trial of love, the dumbest of all, where you literally get to pick your true love, Amy or Elise. Also, I feel like there's almost no one alive who chose Elise and was serious about it. I'm just saying. And nothing comes of that. Nothing changes. You just pick a love and then the plot doesn't change at all. It doesn't affect anything. What's the point? And then they finally lets you go to this fucking place. And then you realize that Tails was already up here. That motherfucker. What are you doing here? Why couldn't you fly me up here with you? You cheating whore. God damn. Damn it, you, you, you go, and then Silver's there, and then he's like, I'm here to save the future! And he says he's gotta help you rescue the princess, and Sonic is like, oh, you tried to kill me twice, but 
Yeah, you see him on the level. Let's go. So you go and you play this level, and the thing I love about this level is that it's probably the best constructed, and it's also the one that um, was shown in most of the trailers. In fact, I remember back in the day when people were theorizing about the game, this was the level that people thought might be a reboot to Green Hill Zone. It isn't. That would be too cool. There's a lot of strange wind rails that you ride on. I don't really get it. The game's basically on autopilot when you're on them anyway. But, you know, it's the same stuff you've done before. The only intriguing part of this level is it actually lets you play as Silver for a short time. And Silver's gameplay... You know, I'm so disappointed with it because it could have been really cool. It really could have. But instead, it's just a waste of fucking time. Silver's way slower than a lot of the other characters on top of that. And in addition, the, the throwing of, of, of objects, for one, can lag the game out, which is great. But on top of that, targeting doesn't work quite as well as it should, and often the objects you throw get in the way of each other. I've seen objects bounce off one another. It's just poor design overall, and they never really exploit Silver's powers to any real impressive degree. I mean, there's a lot of scripted events where you can move objects to form paths, but you know, I just feel like there's, there's, so, there's so many options here that they just didn't take. There were so many things they could have done and just didn't. It's almost depressing in a way. Actually, might might make Silver a tolerable character. And <laughs> no, I'm sorry. You do another mock stage, which sucks as usual. And then you you get to the end, and you realize that the egg carrier crashes and Elise dies. And I don't understand this. How does Eggman's egg carrier crash to begin with? Why would it suddenly malfunction for no reason? Why is he so panicked about it? If there's anything that's been clear about Doctor Eggman, Doctor Robotnik. Dr. Ivo Robotnik is that that guy always, and I mean always, has a plan of escape. He always gets away. What changed here? Why all of a sudden couldn't he just grab Elise, go to his little hovercraft, and escape the egg carrier? So Sonic's like, oh my god, I, I can't believe this. And Silver's like, wait, I am here to save the future. And there's still a way to fix this. So they both use Chaos Control to go back in time again. Because Silver can do that too. Chaos Whatever. Control. Sonic goes back in time, gives Silver some emeralds, Silver. which is more plot holes, thanks for that. And he jumps into the past and uh, decides to go and do the final mission. Which, to get there, is more busy work. You get to ring the, all the bells in the town. Great. And this is a good time as any to discuss Sonic's other abilities. Remember I mentioned the shop earlier? I haven't really gotten too much into detail, but Sonic can buy these gems, right? And everyone gives him a, gives him a unique ability. And I'm not going to go into detail about all of them, because most of them are complete shit. But there's one in particular I really want to discuss. See, there's this one that, that... It's a purple gem, and it makes Sonic go get really small, but... You might question what the point of that is, but... The thing about it is that it lets you jump indefinitely, meaning Sonic can basically fly. There's already a gem that can make you teleport, which is broken in itself, but this one literally lets you fly indefinitely. There's no limit on this. The thing I love about this is that the very next level has you going into a level with bottomless pits that normally would be a challenge to get across, but as long as you buy this gem, which is made available right before this mission, you can get across it without a problem. You might say I'm cheating, but this is an in-game item. You can buy it right before the level. The game gave it to me, why shouldn't I use it? Also, I'm confused um, about something big here. Tails and Knuckles are still with Sonic, yet we've never seen them. The last time we saw Tails, it was right before the, the, the last mission. And, and he's here now, so he must have followed Sonic through the portal Except we never see him do so, and Knuckles is also here. Are these guys, like, shoved up Sonic's ass or something that you just don't know they're there until he needs them? Is that how this works? That is literally the only explanation I could possibly think of. You beat the level, which sucked. They all sucked. I don't know why you're surprised. Sonic jumps on the egg carrier, and there's no egg carrier level because that might have been cool. But no, it just cuts right to Sonic. Being like, I'm gonna stop you, Eggman. And Eggman's like, no, I'm gonna fight you now. Even though my flying fortress is crashing, I feel the need to fight you. And he had enough time to get to this thing and power it up. Why couldn't he have gotten to it if his egg carrier was crashing? Yeah, yeah and then he had, not, he had enough time to fight Sonic. 
Okay. And this fight is, is probably the stupidest one of all. Because, get this, the first thing you have to do is grab a hold of the egg wyvern's horn and steer it into falling debris. Yeah, it's just like the egg Cerberus. Yet, it's even made stupider now because Eggman is literally behind the controls of this thing. Why is Sonic able to steer it into anything? Why is the horn even there? It doesn't make any sense! The only difference this time is that after you, you know, destroy the canopy, and they're like, oh, now I can hit you more directly. Well, this time it's actually true, and you just hit Eggman in the face until you inevitably win. It's not that hard a fight. The only thing you really have to worry about is falling to your death. And the camera can betray you a lot in that regard, but as long as you're careful, you won't have that much of an issue. And then, you know, and then you have the final cutscene where they escape the egg carrier. You know what would have been cool? Have a final level where you escape a, a, an exploding egg carrier. That might have been cool. But that's why it's not in this game. Because that might have been cool. So they escape, and then they start laughing annoyingly, and then that's the end of that segment. And you know what the worst part about this is? I still have three stories left to cover. We're not even halfway done. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.